cup of coffee, sit back and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire and motivate you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Visit CYACYL.com. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. In a world of technology where online dating, texting, instant messaging, and video chatting has far outpaced talking on the phone or formal one-on-one dates, navigating today's dating world may seem like a daunting task. For those that have re-entered the dating world after many years in a relationship, you may not know where to begin. Today's guests, Ellen Fine and Sherry Snyder, are here to help us navigate the waters that are uncharted for so many of us. In 1995, Ellen and Sherry wrote the New York Times bestseller, The Rules, a book that revolutionized the dating world. And now they're back with updated dating information. Their new book, Not Your Mother's Rules, The New Secrets for Dating, offers a modern take that will help women in today's information age create the happy love lives they want and deserve. So whether you're a 20-something learning to date, a 30-something tired of being single, a 40-something giving advice to your daughter, or a 50-something getting back into today's game, Ellen and Sherry have the advice you've been waiting for. As Oprah said, The Rules isn't just a book, it's a movement. Ellen and Sherry are the authors of five books, they run a dating consulting company, and they've appeared extensively on television and radio, and in print media. Welcome, Ellen and Sherry. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having us. Ladies, I am recently divorced, and the thought of dating again is scary. I mean, as I said, we are texting, sexting, tweeting, IMing, Skyping, video chatting. I I don't even know what it is we're doing anymore, to be honest with you. So why did you write this book, and what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen on the dating front since you wrote the original rules? Well, this is Ellen. We realized that people really aren't using the phone, and with the advent of technology, Every, you know, the whole point of the rules is that you can't get a guy the way you can get a condo or a job and be aggressive and hunt it down with a gun. <laughs> you can't do it. Mm-hmm. You have to pull back. And technology is all about being out there. So now you have a Twitter. You have Facebook. You, have, you check into your Facebook and you, you say what Starbucks you're at and what you're, you take a photo of your drink. It's, it's all about not being mysterious. And the two are colliding. And so there's like no dating except for our clients. They're having successful dates. We've been doing consultations since this whole book came out. We have rules dating coaches that we train, and we realize that every, most women are like, tweeting every hour, I'm getting gas, gas went up. Um, they were on his page, his Facebook. They, they, they would call us and say, Ellen and Sherry, I love your rules. I don't call guys, but what I do do, I friend them on Facebook, and then I write on their wall, and, but we're not getting dates. Or they'd meet a guy he texts them, they text back, he texts them, he did, like that, nanoseconds, and they would text till midnight, take a break to sleep. You know, everybody sleeps, these girls don't use teddy bears now, they sleep with their phones, get up in the morning, text more, but not get a date. And I, I think what made us write the book was a few things. That, uh, one girl lost her phone in Bloomingdale's, and she said she couldn't find it for a day, and in that day she got a text. Mm-hmm. And so she didn't get it. And he said, hi, nice meeting you, but she never wrote back. And then he wrote another one. And then by the time she got her phone a day later, he had written three texts. And the last one said, hey, want to get together this weekend? Before that, she had just been texting and texting and texting, but no dates, thinking that, that him getting to know her soul right away through text, and you know, they, then they study it and they forward it to their friends. What do you think he meant when he said that? And meanwhile, they're not getting dates. I love what your work is about because some people may say, well, this is playing games, but it's not. It's not really respecting yourself and establishing boundaries. Right. This is not a game. And if it's a game, buy another book. If you don't have a problem in this area, then we think you should buy. Uh, there's so many good books out there. You should buy another book. But there are people out there that did not know this. We didn't know this. So when we heard about the rules in 19-whatever, in we were dying. And now with, with Facebook – 
like I don't know that I would have known not to write on his wall every day or to keep my 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 Facebook profile rulesy, meaning not to write gloomy Monday, hate my boss, or you know the right. usual. I can't believe he dumped me, and then all your friends like it, and everyone goes he'll be sorry. And a new guy reading this is like, whoa! You're creating that persona that you're putting out there. Or the opposite. You're on his page. We have a rarely write on his wall. We have say off his Facebook page, and we know you're going to go on his wall. We know that, but. If you start on dates saying, "Oh, I saw her uh, last week. You went, you went, you went to the movies with a whole bunch of people. So, so who are those girls?" Or, "Oh, I saw you in a hot tub. Well, who was in the, you know, who was in the photo?" Or they fend his mother. It's like they're scared. These guys don't like this. So, before we get to the social media that you've just touched upon, Sherry, let me ask you: Online dating is such a a big player in today's dating world, and to me. It seems like it's backwards and it's scary because when when we were younger, you know, you met someone and you kind of felt it out and you saw if there was some chemistry. Then you went on the date. Now you're literally going on a date with a stranger and then you're determining there's no chemistry. And I, I just think it's wrought with rejection. What is your advice about online dating and how do we create the right profile? Well, we actually love online dating. Like maybe 20 years ago, it was scary, but now everybody's on it. My dentist is on it. My neighbors, divorced women I know, because you can't, like, you're not going to meet um, a guy when you're in your 40s, like walking down the street. Yeah. When you're 20, you meet guys in college easily, but when you're older, your world gets smaller and, you know, everybody at work is married. So we help women post ads online. We put a couple of pretty photos. We write a very short ad and we let men email them. The mistakes women are making are they're emailing men first and they're, you know, go, going on, um, Pen pal, you know, oh, they're, they're going into pen pal relationships. Mm-hmm. Online dating ad is very deep. It's like, no, no, please be emotionally secure, and you know, don't, don't be a they, they, narcissist. No narcissist, please apply or write. Yeah, like, yeah. They right. sound like they've been hurt, and we're like, no, write your favorite book, your favorite movie. It's not a lie not to put a diary online. It's manipulative. To not put your deepest, darkest feelings in your online ad is just smart. Say what book you like. Say what movie you like. Not a lie to say what books and movies you like. You just don't have to put everything that happened to you. And I don't know, no losers, you know. <laughs> like, get it. They don't ask you out within four emails, then you just move on because they could be time wasters. They could yeah. be married. You're helping your client create the right profile. But what about weeding through what's out there? I remember the movie Must Love Dogs, and the main character was advised to create a different character, in essence, for each dating site they were on. How do you know if the person that you're responding to is legitimate? How do you weed out the married guys just looking to mess around, and what do you advise people? We think that married men probably won't take you out on Saturday night. Married men won't be able to put up with a rules girl. She doesn't see him last minute because his wife went to the supermarket. She'll only do Saturday night. Mm -hmm. She's on ba- if you don't, if you skip Valentine's Day, because you know he took his, it's like it's pretty. Trust me, with the rules in two weeks, any married man wouldn't be able to keep up. Married men want to see you because their wife went away with her sister for the weekend, but she, but they didn't know that. They're not up to the schedule of a rules girl, and they often don't post a photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not saying photos are the life and death, but if a guy doesn't have a photo, we're a little like, oh, be careful. He could be a woman in the beginning until you speak to him on the phone and meet him. He could be your ex husband or your ex-husband's wife, or new wife. It could be anybody. <laughs> what else do you advise about meeting someone online? What yeah, safety tips? Address, and we, I tell this to everyone and even my, you know, anyone that I know, I say, make sure you have one friend that's like your, your caller that night and you make sure like they don't, you, they don't go to sleep until they hear from you. So God forbid a million times you meet a guy, and I don't know what happens, but in the parking lot, he can throw you in his car. I mean, it's not happening, Mm -hmm. but nobody, there should be some best friend that has his profile ad, his phone number. God forbid, no, seriously, God forbid you don't come home, she's the one that calls the police. She calls the police. So you tell her that, and you say, look, if you don't hear from me, call the police. I've had a few friends do that with me because they, you know, and then I'd have, I wouldn't be able to, like, I don't know who she went out with. Somebody's got to know where you are. You never get in his car and go somewhere else. Let's say a guy says, okay, I want to meet you. Let's meet at Starbucks and blah, blah, blah. Don't get in his car at Starbucks and we say go for, if he says, for a lovely drive. Don't do it. You don't know him. You know, until you get a little more information about him. Be careful, everybody. Come on. Now, we're talking about online dating, but where and how do you advise meeting a person you want to attract? Are there other good places? 
There's well, speed dating. There's singles events. There's tennis parties. We think single things are best because people are single. Some people report back, I went to a museum dinner. I went to this. The problem is a lot of those people are married, but we're like, just get out of the house. You never know. You never know. So we're like, if, if you want to go, to, if you really don't want to go to single things, we, we think you should. But if you don't, then go to other things. You can meet someone anywhere. But you can't meet anybody sitting at home unless you're doing online dating. Yeah, belong to a gym, even if you like to yeah, w- yeah. walk outside. Join a gym anywhere where the guys are. Like, don't jo- don't go to a yoga place where it's only women. Like, be smart. Look for where the guys are, but don't, you know, initiate anything. But golf courses, tennis parties, um, yeah. sports, sports bars are great. Ladies, we're going to take a break. Now that we've talked about how we can meet people, we're going to learn about your rules when we come back. So we're going to take a break for this week's Good Life Tips. Stay with us for information to help you make the positive life changes that we talk about on the show. Welcome back to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman, and our guests today are Ellen Fine and Sherry Snyder, author of the new book, Not Your Mother's Rules, The New Secrets for Dating. Ladies, before break, we were talking about online dating and some other great places that people can meet the type of person that they want to attract. Now that they've met the person, let's talk about some of the rules. Let's talk about some of the general rules that you wrote about last time, and then let's talk about some of the rules as they relate to the specific technology. So generally speaking, what are some of the boundaries and and ways that people can establish boundaries and respect themselves while dating. Let's start with you, Sherry. Well, don't answer a text in a nanosecond. Women are getting texts and treating it like they won the lottery. Like, you don't respond right away. Don't treat it like it's something special because he may, may not be asking you out. He may just be saying, hey, what's up? So you can wait a few hours, especially if it's the first text, and then also get out of there. If you are in a text chat, end it first. You know, after a few minutes of talking, just say, got to go, running to the gym, jumping in the shower. Because if you hang in there, like, for hours, like women do, there's no mystery, there's no chase, and the guy usually doesn't even ask you out. And you almost look like you have nothing better to be doing. Exactly. No answering texts after midnight. It's usually a booty call. And you know what? Today, you have to be really careful, Joan, because think about it. In 1995, if you had a romantic interlude on the phone, even if the guy taped it, what was he going to do? Who's he playing it for? Now... He can post it on YouTube, and he can take any, like, exciting text little things you've had going on. He can, he can post them on his frat website. He can do anything he wants, so you've got to be really careful. This is what made us write the book. We were hearing horror stories. A guy can take, you know, if you're going to film yourself with your top off, he can, he can post it anywhere, and people's lives have been – we tell them to move on. Look, the world didn't end, but it's, it's, you, you can get a lawyer, and you still can't get everything down dangerous. So putting things in writing, uh, that would go with Facebook messaging because people don't realize you can't delete those. Once you drunk message or or put something out there, there's no way to delete a Facebook message. Yeah, but at least a Facebook message you thought was for the world. Now you thought it was just between you and him because you were in love and now you're not in love. So now it's really bad. So that also goes, I'm assuming, for tweeting and emailing and any other thing that has a longevity that can come back and haunt you. Yeah, but this. But remember, with with Twitter, you're expecting everyone to see it. With with a private message with a boy you're dating, you you really think he loves you. He's not going to tell. He's not going to show it to anybody. Or the two a.m. booty call. It used to be like if a guy wanted to have a two a.m. booty call, he had to like know where you lived or your roommate or your parents. Now he has your phone number with 25 other girls or 13 other girls, and he sends a text: Hi, anybody in New York City? Or hey, want to meet up later? You're flattered, and you shouldn't be. Yeah, and well, that's what I love when you say in the book, no good comes after midnight. Yeah, nothing good comes after midnight. We just, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about Facebook? We touched upon that, but, I mean, to me, Facebook, it turns all of us into stalkers. So how do we avoid this? We have rulesy profile. We have a rulesy wall. We don't write, we rarely write on his wall. You can say, hey, cute guy, congratulations on passing the bar, or, hey, con- you know, great about that new promotion, you know, or like it, but that's it. Every day, we've had stories where girls have, like, started dating a guy, and then they write on his wall every day, and they kind of are also doing it because they see he's still friends with his ex-girlfriend and some other pretty girls, and they write, hi, Hanson, had so much fun with you last night, can't wait to see you again, and after two weeks, he's like, I need space. Blow it. In so many ways, because there's so many ways to blow it now. You have to be really careful. It's basically applying the rules that we were always taught, you know, let the guy make the first move when he would call you and things like that. So it's the same thing. With the new technology, let him text first, let him friend you first. It's the same thing, just applied technologically. 
You know what it is? Just Yes, and just think about it. Don't you always want something a little more just because it's a little harder to get? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like a dress. Like you're like, I don't know if I want to buy the dress. I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of money. When am I going to wear it? And then you find out they don't have any more left. Now you have to have it. You're calling every store in the world to see if you can get it. It's just like that. Now, Sherry, how do we know when to say next? How do we know when it's just not going to work out? Well, you know, if a guy is skipping a week, that's a bad sign because where is he? I mean, it's like if he's not asking you out for Saturday night, he must be asking someone else out. He's definitely not working Saturday night. And also, if they cancel more than once, we find that that's sort of a barometer that he's not that just he's just not that into you. What do you ladies think about this uh, friends with benefits? This new thing that's going on now. What do you think? We think. I know what we all think, but what do we advise to the girls? That's like, you know what, if you're 19 and you, the guys are just coming at you every day and you're having fun and you haven't fell in love and you're Samantha from Sex in the City, we're like, okay, read another book. Like we said, you don't have to buy the rules or not your mother's rules. But if you want a relationship, what's the point? What are, what are you doing? Yeah, that's just wrought with heartache. Now, women say, I don't mind if he never calls me. I, want, I just want to sleep with him. He's the, hot, he's the hot guy at the gym. I don't care if I never hear from him. But inevitably, they're hysterical the next day. You ladies say that your dating history and childhood issues can affect the men that you meet. How does that impact you? Well, we found that, let's say, if you had a distant father or unavailable mother, like they weren't warm and affectionate, that you might be attracted to men that are unavailable. So you'll date a married guy. You'll date a guy who's dating other women and says, I don't want to be monogamous. You'll, you'll date an alcoholic. You'll date someone who just doesn't give you what you need or want and because it's comfortable. It reminds you of your childhood. And conversely, if you're daddy's girl, we have clients who are daddy's girl. The daddies adore them. They even book consultations for them. And they think all men are wonderful. They think they could call men and buy them presents and decorate their apartment, not that the guy will just be in love with them like their daddy. But it doesn't work. So it could be a false um, friend, you know, to have a a really great dad and think all men are going to love you. Not all men are going to love you. You say also that you shouldn't have to buy the relationship. Nothing worth having should be bought. Don't buy them dinner. Don't spend lavishly in the beginning, when is it okay to make that shift and then start to perhaps pay for a meal or or so forth? Down the line, when you know that he's really regularly asking you out, you, 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 everybody will know when it's the right time. You know, you, we're not saying take advantage of guys. We're saying, and you don't pay for a lot of things, but you pay here and there, but it's, it's down the line, definitely down the line. The book is Not Your Mother's Rules, The New Secrets for Dating by Ellen Fine and Sherry Snyder. Ladies, if they'd like more information about you and your books, where can our listeners go? They can go to therulesbook.com. They can follow us on Twitter, at The Rules Books. And they can go to our Facebook page, which is The Rules Official Book. And as always, our listeners can visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows as podcasts, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, take part in the book club, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. In about 30 seconds or less each, I'd like you to leave our listeners with what you think is the most important thing that they should remember when entering or re-entering the dating world. And let's begin with you, Sherry. Well, I think it's really important to remember that you're a creature unlike any other. That means you're special, even if you're unemployed or divorced or whatever, that you are special and you deserve the best guy and any guy would be lucky to be with you. So you have confidence when you go out there and date and don't settle for crumbs. Ellen? I would say just don't talk too much in the first few weeks, meaning don't overshare. Don't tell him your whole life history. He's not, he's not your friend yet. He will be. You'll tell him everything one day, I promise. But in the beginning, it's like anything else when you just meet someone. You don't share everything. Well, ladies, I'm really glad that you spent time with us today. I read your book last night. How did you like the book? I loved it. And that's why I'm recommending it because, as I said, it's not a a roadmap for playing games or anything like that. It's teaching people how to establish boundaries and respect themselves. And that's something that we forget to do often when we're in a relationship. So if you're looking to learn how to do that, I recommend Not Your Mother's Rules and New Secrets for Dating. And I'm very happy that you both spent time with us today. So thank you. Thank you so much for having us. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.